Thank you, Vila. You're good to go. Okay, thank you very much, Nina. A very good morning to everyone. I would like to welcome everyone to our Neuro Emergency CN for the month and welcome to the Ashraf. For those who are newcomers, welcome again for our CME session. This group is a collaboration of multidisciplinary department to share a similar interest. This is the seventh section since we initiated this uh, Neuro Emergency Special Interest Group. In conjunction with that, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our guest speaker for the day, Dr. Chao Chi Tong, it's an emergency physician from the Department of Emergency and Trauma, Hospital Sobranjaya. He obtained his undergrad and postgrad degree from University of Malaya. He's actively engaged in a various life support training as a speaker and also instructor for the past 10 years. He currently holds the position of the Vice President of Penang CPR Society and a Medical Officer for Malaysian Red Crescent Society, Sabrang Prai, Selatan District. Dr. Chow shows a great passion in a stroke care. He's an ED coordinator for the Hospital Sabrang Stroke Team and the National Committee of Malaysia Stroke Academy since 2019. He's heavily involved in the development of stroke activation, acute stroke unit, and stroke protocol in Hospital Sabrang I'm sure he's the one of the best person to talk further on yeah, interpreting the NIHSS call. So, Dr. Chow, I'm going to turn the presentation to you now. You can start with the Chow. Thank you, Dr. Vila, for the kind introduction. Okay, so morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to share on uh, NIHSS, uh, how, how to perform NIHSS uh, screening in the emergency department. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. Uh, we'll start with some introduction, uh, the characteristics of uh, NIHSS, the four general principles of uh, doing NIHSS, how to score them, and uh, finally a summary. So NIHSS actually is developed uh, back in 1983 by the NIH Stroke Research Neurologist as a research tool for acute stroke clinical trials. Like. But now it has been uh, widely used as a clinical assessment tool instead. Uh, uh, number one, to measure the stroke-related neurological deficit. Then number two, to decide appropriate treatment, to predict the stroke patient's outcome, and to monitor the stroke patient's progress. So we can, we can see NIHSS like uh, GCS score whereby we, we communicate with uh, uh, another person or a consultant over the phone uh, to, to tell him or her what is the patient's uh, condition uh, rather than uh, uh, telling uh, each and every uh, component. Then we tell a number, then they can roughly know, oh, okay, this is bad, or this is actually a mouse stroke and all that. And uh, the, the NIHSS score also helps us to decide whether to thrombolize or not. But uh, I know re uh, recently the 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 guideline has been revised uh, that even uh, that there's no uh, uh, I mean the, the, the lower uh, lower value to start thrombolysis. Last time it used to be 4 to 22. Now even there's uh, this, uh, we call it disabling uh, stroke. Uh, then we can start uh, uh, thrombolysis. No? Something like uh, like a, a a singer which suddenly developed a uh, slurring of speech. So it is disabling uh, for, for that singer. So we, we can consider starting thrombolysis even though the, the NHSS is less than four. Okay, so the characteristics of NHSS, uh, number one, it is simple and practical. Uh, although for, for a start, it, you, it might seem like uh, uh, there's 11 components altogether uh, might be a bit difficult, but uh, after practicing for a few times, uh, then uh, it, will, it, will, it will be uh, pretty straightforward lah, huh? and practical, easy to use. And uh, it ac uh, accurately describes the, the phenomenon that the patient is having, and it is reproducible and consistent. Huh? Uh, to, to make it reproducible and consistent, then we, we must uh, uh, follow, follow the rules of NIHSS, which I'm going to uh, talk about later on. And it provides a common language for uh, information exchange, like 
how uh, GCS. Uh, okay, so NHSS, as I mentioned before, is a 11 item uh, neurological examination stroke scale. So it used to uh, evaluate the effect of the acute cerebral impact on different specific abilities. So we, uh, we start off with the level of consciousness, then the gaze, uh, only the horizontal gaze is tested, the visual field, facial paralysis, motor strength, oh. upper limb and lower limb, uh, sensory, ataxia, language, dysphoria, and also neglect. So the total score is calculated by adding all the scores for each element. So zero is the lowest score, which is uh uh and forty two is the highest score that you can you can score. But bear in mind, uh, it is uh, NHSS is not a linear skill. Uh, uh, linear skill meaning that uh the higher the score, uh, the more severe the stroke. Uh, NHSS after a certain scoring the patient is already pretty severe. So uh, it's sort of like, a, a, it, will, it will come to a plateau. It's not a linear, straight up like that. Okay, uh, it will come to a plateau. So the four general principles uh, in NHSS testing is number one, the first response is the most reproducible. Okay. And avoid coaching the patient. Don't uh, don't give too much hint. Uh, some items are scored only if definitely present. If not present or patient cannot do, then you don't score it. And score only what the patient does, not what you expect the patient can do. We don't put our expectation uh, into the scoring. Okay, so now I'm uh, move on to step by step how to score the NHSS. Okay, so 11 items sometimes is a bit uh, too many for us to, to remember. So uh, you can always take out your phone uh, and install this uh, MD calculator. So inside this calculator, uh, I, I, I use this calculator a lot. I'm, uh, I have no, no uh, affiliation with them, but uh, this is a good app to, to have in your phone. Okay, so, so under this, uh, the MD calculator, uh, you have that 11 question uh, the, and the scoring also. You just click, click, click. Even the, the cookie jar photo and the discussion oh, okay. test uh, is there. So, uh, but this one, you go to evidence, uh, the third app. Okay, go to evidence, then you have this photo. But the uh, uh, problem with this photo is, is pretty small. Uh, the smaller your phone then the smaller the photo okay so you can you can uh if your department has a tab then you can use a tab lah, or ipad or whatever uh, or you can just simply uh, uh print out this photo and laminate it okay then after that it will it will tell you the result uh, how many points uh the patient scored so so when and how frequent should i score and i just says okay so, first baseline before you start treatment, okay? Before you start treatment, when patient arrive in ED, then you uh, usually will, we will score the NHSSS first. Uh, uh, then after that, uh, if, you, if you started patient on thrombolysis, then two hours after the thrombolysis, then you, you need to uh, re-score again. And 24 hours uh, post-stroke onset, also you score again. Seven to ten days and three months uh, to to see the patient's progress. So number one, level of consciousness. Okay, level of consciousness consists of three sub items: one A, one B, and one C. No, one A is responsiveness. One B is ability to answer questions, and one C is ability to obey verbal commands. So for one A, uh. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy uh, Not much of uh, uh, assessment needed. Uh, when 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 you start talking to patient, then at the same time you are assessing the responsiveness. Uh, if the if the patient can talk to you, then obviously patient is alert uh, All right. Then 
one, you score one if patient uh, aroused to minor stimulation. Uh, like you need to, you need to uh, call patient, hello, hello. Uh, then number two is you need to uh, give repeated stimulation or you give pain stimulus. Okay. And number three, uh, patient only uh, uh, have some posturing or unresponsive. Okay. If the patient, uh, if you score a three means patient is comatose. Uh, patient is comatose. So by, by knowing this, we can actually simplify it as I think for, for, for us in emergency, uh, we are more familiar with AVP. Okay. So we, we, we can actually use zero, one, two, three, uh, uh, like AVPU. So A, patient is awake. B, response to verbal stimuli. Uh, two, uh, patient response to painful stimulation. And three, patient is unresponsive. So 1B, ability to answer questions. Uh, so uh, there, there are two things that you, you will ask a patient. Uh, number one is uh, what month is, uh, is now. And number two, uh, the patient's age. Okay. So uh, do not coach the patient. Okay. Do not coach. Can I say uh, uh, if like patient is, uh, 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 don't know what month is this, then you, you, you try to hint. Like for example, uh, uh, if let's say uh, now 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 is uh, uh, December for example, and Christmas is just uh, uh, yesterday, then say hey uh, yesterday you celebrate Christmas, so now what month is this? Uh, so do not do not do that. Okay, do not coach, right? So accept only the first answer. If the patient uh, first answer is wrong, means wrong. Okay. But patient may uh, may write out their answer if the patient is uh, upper, uh, if if patient cannot talk uh, or patient has a uh, uh, dysphasia or aphasia, uh, patient can write out their answer. So if they get both questions correct, then you score zero. Okay. If only one question correct, then you score a one. Or if patient is intubated or have trauma to the uh, to the face, or you get a uh, language barrier, okay, foreigner that you cannot talk, uh, you cannot speak his language, and he cannot really understand you, then you score a one, okay? If the patient is comatose, then you straight away score a zero, okay? And uh, aphasic here means a patient, patient is aphasic and patient also cannot write out the answer, then you score a two. Okay. So frequent asked question. The patient is asked to state age and the current month. The patient who initially responds incorrectly but later corrects himself is scored as having uh, given a correct response or not. So the answer is no. Right? We only accept the first answer. Okay. But if the patient is asked to state the age and the current month, patient answered year of born instead of age. Right, so uh, is this correct? No, okay, we only uh, accept H. Okay, so 1C, ability to obey verbal commands. Right, so you ask patient again uh, to do two simple one-step uh, instruction. Okay, so uh, open and close the eyes uh, and Grip and release the non paratic hand. Okay, non paratic hand. If the if if the, the, the affected hand already power zero, then uh please don't don't ask him to 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 grip and release. Then you you score the patient. Oh, he cannot perform the task. No lah. All right. So because this one is just uh to to test whether he can obey the the instruction or not. So we are not testing the power. Okay. So we don't test the non uh the 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 paratic side. Okay, so give the command verbally and at the same time, you can visually demonstrate the task to him. Okay, uh, if he cannot hear it, then you can, you can demonstrate the task. Uh, this, this is especially uh, uh, useful if the patient cannot understand what, what you, are, you are trying to tell them, uh, language barrier and all that. Okay, so if uh, the person can perform both tasks correctly, then you score zero. If only one task 
then you score one. If patient comatose, then a uh, standard score is two. Okay, so what if my patient has no limb? Okay, so use any appropriate one step command will do. Uh, probably if you want to uh, ask patient to turn his head or, or open mouth, close mouth, something like that. Lah. Okay. Right, so item number two, uh, horizontal gaze. So you track your finger from side to side. Okay, you track your finger from side to side. So if patient can uh, follow, follow your finger, then this uh, score zero, normal. Partial gaze palsy and two, false gaze palsy. Okay, so these two, if, if let's say patient cannot track your finger side to side, then you need to perform uh, oculocephalic reflex, which is the doll's eye maneuver. Right, so if the gaze palsy can be corrected by dos eye maneuver, then you score a one. If it cannot be overcome, then you score a two. Okay, if the patient is confused, but uh, patient is opening eyes, then you can just walk around the bed. Okay, uh, so usually if patient eyes can uh, maintain eye contact with you, patient will like follow you walking to to the left of his bed walking to the right of his bed, then this one is normal. All right? But if patient is comatose, then you will uh, open the patient's eye and uh, perform those eye maneuver. Okay? Uh, if the patient only have uh, isolated uh, cranial nerve palsy, uh, three, four, or six, then you score one. Okay, so this is the those eye maneuver. Uh, Normally, uh, you ask the patient to to uh, uh, need to ask the patient also. Uh, normally, if the if the if the patient is like as, uh, especially if you are examining those uh, poor GCS one, uh, if you open the eyes, then you you turn the head side to side. Uh, the eye will always focus uh, to the front. Okay, the eyes will always focus to the front. If the eyes follow the direction of the head, that means. Uh, this is not normal. Uh, this is not normal. Uh, if the eye follow the movement of the head, then the, uh, you score a two. Okay. If the eyes always focus to the front, uh, and there's no, uh, 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 but there is uh, horizontal gaze palsy before this, uh, then you score a one. Okay. Okay. Visual view. Third one, visual field. So you test four quadrants using finger counting. Okay, finger counting, uh, you only uh, use well, one finger, two finger, or five finger. Uh, don't trick the patient like, uh, like they, uh, how many how many fingers or, or how many fingers that. Uh, don't don't trick the patient. Uh, uh, so use one finger, two finger, or five fingers. Okay, then use finger uh, wiggling. If poor visual acuity, especially for those patients that uh, wear specs, uh, so it's, uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult. Nah? So you use finger, uh, finger wiggling or visual threat if the patient is confused or comatose. Right? So if no visual loss, then you score zero. Uh, partial hemianopia, uh, meaning it's not the, the whole uh, half. Okay? Uh, or, or you can call it a quadrano, uh, quadranopia. Uh, quadranopia is uh, one mark. Okay. Complete hemianopia is two. Or bilateral uh, blindness or bilateral hemianopia is called three. Okay. If comatose, then you need to use a visual trap to, to see uh, what is the scoring. Okay. So what if my patient only have one functioning eye? Okay, the other eye probably uh, got trauma or, or, or whatever reason causing only have uh, uh, only one functioning eye. Okay, so if there is a unilateral blindness or aniculation, uh, visual field in the remaining eye uh, are scored. Okay, only score the remaining eye. Then you might ask, does this still apply when the presenting deficit is? Acute monoocular visual loss from a central retina artery occlusion. Okay, so the answer is yes. NIHSS will not give any weight to the deficit due to central retina artery occlusion, but then it was not designed for this purpose. Uh, such a patient 
would not be eligible for any clinical trial of stroke therapy, uh, which was the target purpose of the scale. Uh, remember, the, the initial NIHSS scale uh, was a, a clinical trial tool, not a clinical assessment tool. So if you follow the, the original NIHSS uh, uh, writing, so they, they, will, they, they won't score the patient if the patient suffers from a central retinal artery occlusion. Okay, so uh, facial palsy. Facial palsy, very simple. Ask the patient to wrinkle the forehead and show the teeth, right? So if patient is confused, then you give uh, pain stimuli and look for the uh, symmetry of the grimace. Okay, so zero is normal symmetry. Okay, one is a minor paralysis, two, partial paralysis of the whole lower face, and three is upper and lower, complete paralysis. Okay, or if patient is, coma, is comatose, then you uh, automatically uh, score a three. So comparing these two, right? So uh, Angelina will score a one, okay? Believe me, uh, she scored a one, okay? Uh, she, she suffered from Bell's palsy before, so she had some uh, a very minor uh, uh, loss of reduced nasolabial fold, okay? Reduced, believe me, okay? Uh, slight reduction in, in nasolabial fold. So if it's not, uh, not obvious, Okay, if the if the deficit is not obvious or only picked up by your consultant, uh, then you score a one. Okay, if it is like very obvious, uh, ask the patient to, to show teeth. You can from far you can see like oh reduce uh nasolabial fold. Uh, then you score a two. Then this one up also tada lower also tada the whole face already paralysis. Then this one you score a three. Now we move on to motto. So motto, you got left, right, upper limb, and lower limb. So uh, for upper limb first, you assess both arms individually. Okay, like uh, when when we test for power for the normal neurological estimation, we usually we test both upper limb together to to compare. But NIHSS we assess uh, one arm, one limb at a time. Okay, one limb at a time. So start with the non paralytic arm first. Then lift up the arm with the palm facing downward. Okay. If the patient is sitting, then you use 90 degrees. If the patient is in supine position, then you lift up 45 degrees. Okay. Maintain the arm position for 10 seconds. And you need to count out loud. Or, and uh, at the same time, you use fingers to show the count. Okay. So like for example, you, you, you tell the patient, okay, uh, lift up your arm, uh, 90 degrees for 10 seconds. Okay, one, two, three, four. So count for the patient to see. Okay, so if the patient cannot understand, then you can demonstrate out the action. So for, for motto, you have a uh, total four. Lah, okay, so that if there's no drift, for 10 seconds, then you score zero. Drift but doesn't hit the bed, you score one. Drift and hit the bed, you score two. No effort against gravity, meaning it can't, can't lift up uh, the hand, but it can uh, have some uh, horizontal movement on the bed itself. Okay, then you score a three. No movement at all. Or patient is if uh, if the patient is comatose, then you score four. If the patient has uh, amputation or some joint fusion uh, over the shoulder which uh, uh, doesn't allow the patient to, to lift up the arm, then uh, you write UN. Okay, untestable. Okay, uh, leg also the same, but leg only five seconds. Okay, again, uh, assess both legs individually, uh, one limb at a time. Okay, start with the non paralytic leg first. Okay. Uh, this one, you can only test in uh, supine position. Uh, uh. Supine position, lift up the leg at 30 degrees and maintain the position for 5 seconds. Again, you count out loud and use finger at the same time to count uh, to show the count. Patient cannot understand, you can demonstrate the action. 
Okay, same thing. If there's no drift for five seconds, you score zero. Drift doesn't hit the bed, one. Uh, drift and hit the bed, two. Okay, no effort against gravity at all, but there is horizontal movement on the bed surface. You score three. No movement at all, or patient comatose, you score four. If patient uh, got hip amputation, uh, or already uh, uh, fused the, the hip joint, then you write UN. Okay, uh, so so this is the, the 45 degrees uh, and this is the 30 degrees okay, for loading. So how should I score the patient if the patient has already uh, having baseline limb weakness from previous stroke? Okay, for example, previously patient has a, a left hemiparesis. Then now patient came in with right side bulla. Okay, okay. Uh, so should I score the left side? Huh? Because the left side is the, the O stroke. Okay, the answer is yes. Uh, scoring should include prior deficits. Okay. Uh, whatever you elicit, uh, you score it. Okay. Whatever you elicit, you score it. So what if my patient uh, lowered his limb slightly after I release, but immediately correct to the original position, meaning when you ask patient to, uh, uh, you, you, you hold the hand, you say, okay, hold it for 10 seconds. Then when you let go, the hand drops down and correct back okay, to the original position. Okay, so do you, do you score a one uh, or you score zero? Okay, so this is called a dip, not a drift. Okay, the, the arm actually dip down and correct it by itself. Okay, so this is a dip, not a drift. Therefore, you don't score one. Okay, this one you score zero. Okay, coming on to item number seven, limb ataxia. So you test upper limb and lower limb. You check for unilateral uh, cerebellar lesion. Okay, so for upper limb, you do the finger nose test. Repeat three to four times. For lower limb, you do Huchin test. Again, you repeat three to four times. Okay. So, if let's say the patient uh, cannot see or the visual acuity is like very, very poor or patient become blind for whatever reason, okay, you can ask the patient to just uh, uh, nose to air. Okay, just ask the patient to point nose and point, point forward only. Okay, to, to uh, simulate finger nose test. Lah. Okay, so if patient is comatose, uh, this is the special one. Uh, if patient is comatose, then you score zero. Okay, if patient cannot understand you, you also score zero. Okay, so this is the, the item that uh, you only score when it is definitely present. Okay, ataxia, you only give mark if it is definitely present. So if patient is comatose, then you cannot test for ataxia, so you score zero. Okay, uh, so if present in one limb, then you score one. Present in two limbs, you score two. So how to score ataxia if patient uh, is hemiplegic? Uh, the hand also like cannot really raise up. Then of course, patient cannot do finger nose, right? So how, how do we test for ataxia? So ataxia is scored as absent. Okay, the patient with hemiplegia because it is not definitely present the time of examination, uh, unless it is out of proportion to his weakness. Uh, maybe, uh, let's say if his weakness is like only, uh, you, you score the weakness as uh, one, okay? Meaning there's slight drift, but doesn't hit the bed. Uh, but when you, when you test for ataxia, like the, 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 the ataxia is like very, very obvious, okay? Uh, when patient lift up the arm, it's just like slow, uh, a little slight, slight weakness only. But when, when you do finger nose test, it's like very, very obvious clumsiness and all that. Uh, then, then only you, you score as present. Uh, okay. Uh, if like initially you do the motor power, also you score three already. Uh, patient has no anti-gravity movement. Then of course you cannot score the ataxia. Okay, for sensory, you test by pinprick, 
on the proximal part of forelimbs and the face, and then compare the pain intensity for both sides. Okay, only the proximal part because you uh, you try to avoid the distal part because of uh, some uh, neuropathy over the, the glove and stocking uh, distribution. Okay, so only the proximal part is tested. Okay, if the patient is confused or cannot understand, then you can apply neobate pressure to look for grimace. Uh, but uh, for this group of patients, you can only either score zero or two. Lah. Okay, so sensory, if normal, you score zero. Now to moderate sensory loss, you score one. Complete loss, the patient can't feel at all, or patient is quadriplegic, patient is comatose, then you... Uh, uh, Comatose one, uh, uh, again, you need uh, either zero or two. Lah. Okay. So these are the few places that you will, you will test for pain pit sensation. Uh, you try over the, the bony prominence. Lah. Okay. Avoid the distal part because distal part might be uh, confounded by the uh, glove and stocking uh, neuropathy uh, sensory loss. Number, number nine, language dysphasia. Okay, so ask the patient to name few objects. The patient is blind. You can uh, let the patient hold the object and describe. Okay, then uh, the, 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 the most proper way is to describe the cookie jar picture lah, and uh, to read sentences. Okay, so if the patient has no problem uh, uh, naming the objects or describing the picture, you score zero. If there's mild to moderate aphasia or patient is not very fluent in telling the, the to describe the photo, uh, then you, you score a one. Uh, very uh, severely aphasic, fragmented speech, uh, cannot identify objects, then you score two. If no sound at all, uh, patient is mute, or patient comatose, patient... Uh, really cannot understand you, patient cannot speak at all, then you score a three. Okay, so this is the cookie jar photo. Hey, sorry, this is this is not the actual cookie jar photo because this one got cookie monster there. Okay, so this is the actual cookie jar photo. So this photo has uh, two, two different usage. Huh? Okay, uh, number one is to test for that's for the, the, the this atria. I think three, three usages. Uh, that's for this atria. You can ask a patient to, to tell the whole story here and you can also assess for neglect, which we are going to talk about later on. Uh, because there, there, there are two things happening at the same time. Okay? One is the mother's side, uh, the water overflowing, and one is the, the cookie jar uh, side where the boy is falling down and all that. Okay, so uh, this, this is the standard NIHSS uh, naming object photo where uh, you have a key, chair, then you have cactus. Uh, the, the literature says if, if patient uh, tell you that this is a squirrel, also you score it correct uh, because unfortunately the, the, the cactus photo looks like a squirrel to some people, uh, but you score, if, if patient say squirrel, you, you will give uh, uh, you, you you'll score correct lah, uh, for this one. Glove, some patient might call it a hand, also is correct. Uh, uh, feather and hammock. Okay, then uh, the, the standard uh, sentence, you know how down to earth and all that. Okay. But uh, because like, like for example, this hammock, uh, not, not that, uh, common in this part of the world, okay? Uh, not many of us uh, know what is this, okay? So, uh, uh, Dr. Ashraf is here. So, the Ashraf team actually uh, validated the Malaysian version of NIHSS, okay? So, we have a new, uh, uh, new picture. So, we don't call cookie jar uh, picture already because there's no cookie jar in, the, in, in this photo. Uh, the mom's still there, the two kids still there. Okay, uh, but uh, now there's a different, different story going on. And we have uh, new sets of uh, uh, picture over here. We have our good old uh, Slipa Japun. Uh, yeah, with this, uh, uh, actually, I, I don't know 
how, how, how to call this? <laughs> okay, then we have our, our favorite durian, key, and a feather. Okay, then everything has changed to BM. Lah. All right. Okay, so uh, there's also uh, actually this NHS they uh, they have come up with different different uh, version. So uh, now we know that we have uh, our Malaysian version uh, in in Malay. Then I also found out that uh, Taiwan has their own uh, version also. Okay, the words uh, they changed to uh, Mandarin, and the the picture also they use different type of uh, sets of picture uh, but the cookie jar photo they still remain uh, cookie jar photo uh, just that the the individual object they change to something else for this atria uh, we are testing the uh, word articulation so ask the patient to read out the words uh, so uh, so these words lah okay to test for this atria. So if not uh, normal, it's called zero. Mild to moderate this atria, slurring, but you still can understand the patient. You score one. Okay. If you really cannot understand what it's trying to say, uh, or it's just making some sound very severely, this, uh, uh, this atria, then you score two. Patient comatose also, you score two. If the patient is intubated, okay, or uh, some physical barriers, like for example, a uh, uh, patient has uh, uh, a severe uh, injury over the, the, the uh, uh, oral maxillofacial area, then you score UN, you don't score it. Okay. But if you don't have this print out, then uh, uh, you, want to, you want to be fast. Okay. You can just uh, easily ask patient to count one to twenty. Okay, this is the 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 sim the simple way lah. Okay, the simple way is just ask patient to count one to twenty in their own language. Okay, uh, if they cannot read, then you can ask ask them to count in their own language lah. So finally, item eleven is the inattention or neglect. So uh, there are a total of five different uh, modalities that you can test. But then usually we, we test uh, uh, visual and tactile, uh, which are the, the, the easiest to test. Okay. So for visual neglect, uh, hold up one finger in front of the patient's both eyes and ask the patient to determine which side of the finger is wiggling. Okay. So you just hold like this. Okay. Then ask me which side is wiggling. Uh, Left, right, or both. Okay. Tactile, ask the patient to close their eyes and identify which side of the hand is being touched. Okay. So zero, normal. Uh, one, one of the, uh, uh, there's one modality uh, uh, which is uh, not okay. Then two, profound hemi inattention, neglect to more than one modality. And if patient is comatose, then you score two. Okay, so this is the, the, the standard scoring uh, for NIHSS in the patient uh, in coma. Okay, so the, the comatose patient will, will get a very, very high score uh, between 35 to 39, right? But uh, the item two and three, the, the horizontal gaze and the visual field, uh, which is the one that you need to really elicit. Nah. Okay, so in summary, uh, you score NHSS for all stroke patients, nah, whether uh, acute or uh, non-acute, okay? And you perform and score in order nah, from item one to item 11, okay? Accept only the first response and do not coach the patient. Score what you see, not what you expect them to be able to do, okay? Right, with that, thank you very much. So, uh, if we have well. time, if we have time, I think we can, we can uh, uh, watch a video, okay. a short video on NIHSS so that you can have a, a, a better idea uh, after knowing the theory.
Do you feel comfortable right now? Yes, I do. Are you in any pain? No. How old are you today? 71. And do you know what month it is now? Well, it's uh, uh, February. Can you close your eyes and now open your eyes? Can you make a fist with your hand and now open your hands? On item one, he would score a zero. His age was 71, and although he hesitated on what month it is, he did get it correct. It's February. I'll hold them up for you. Follow my finger with your eyes. Great. On best gaze, he also got a zero. It may have been difficult to see that his right eye did go all the way to the right. Now, I want you to look at my nose, and I'm going to wiggle my fingers on the outside to test your vision. Can you do it with one hand covering one eye? And look right here at my eye, and tell me if you see my hands moving. Yeah. Can you point to the hand that moves? Great. Great. Look at my eye. Great. Great. Now I'm going to have you cover the other eye. Put that one down. Terrific. And look at my eye and point to my hand that wiggles. Great, you can put your hand down. Anything wiggling? Great. Great. On visual fields, he would score a zero. I did need to remind him to keep focused on the target, my nose, and to reposition his arms. Now, can you Show me your teeth. Great. Can you raise your eyebrows? Terrific. And now squeeze your eyes shut. Great. All right, you can open your eyes. For facial palsy, he would get a one for a decreased right nasolabial fold. This was somewhat subtle, and sometimes when I'm trying to assess a subtle facial weakness, I have the patient smile, and then I count the number of teeth on both sides. The side with the weakness generally has fewer teeth showing. Now I'm going to have you hold your arms up for the count of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great. Down right there. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Terrific. You can put your arms down. On motor arm, he scored a zero for each arm. Let's hold this leg up for the count of five. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Great. One, two, three, four, five. Terrific. He scores a one point for each leg. After the initial dip, he continued a downward drift of both his left and his right leg. He does not score a two because his leg did not drift down and touch the bed. Now I want you to touch, make a pointer finger with your hand, touch my finger, and then touch your nose. Back and forth. Now touch your nose, my finger, your nose, my finger, your nose, your nose. Excellent. Now let's do it with the other hand. My finger, your nose, my finger, your nose, my finger, 
your nose. Great job. Now I'm going to have you put your heel right on your knee and slide it right down your shin. Okay? Can you do that? And can you bring it back up? And now do it again. Put your heel right down, slide it down, and then bring it back up your shin. Okay, good. Let's have you do it with the other leg. Put this heel on this shin and slide it right down the heel. Good, and slide it back up and slide it back down. Terrific. On limb ataxia, he would score a zero. He did not have ataxia on either his finger to nose or his heel to shin. I want to see if it feels different on the left, the right, or it feels the same. All right? Feels the same. Feels the same. I'm going to do the same thing on your legs. Feels the same. I'm going to do the same thing on your face. I'll be gentle. Same. OK. On sensory testing, he scores a zero. Let me give you your glasses, because I'm going to have you read some things for me. OK. Great. Now, can you describe what's going on in this picture? Yes, a sink is overflowing, and a uh, cookie jar, he's uh, on a step stool, and the cookie jar, he, it, the step stool is uh, uh, tipping over. And uh, that's about it. And uh, the woman is, uh, while well, drying the dishes, and uh, that was about it. Okay, great. Can you name these objects? A key, a glove, a feather, a hammock, chair, and uh, I don't know what, uh, uh, cactus. Great. Now I'm going to have you read some things. You know how, down to earth, I got home from work. Near the table and the dining table, dining room table, I heard him speak on the radio last night. Great. On language testing, he scores a zero. Even though he hesitated, he eventually did get the word cactus. Can you read these? Mama, tip tap, 50 50, thanks. Huckleberry, baseball player. Terrific. On dysarthria, he scores a one for slurred speech. A zero would be when there's crystal clear speech, and a two would be when it's almost unintelligible speech, and anything in between would score a one. Now I'm going to touch you on the left side, the right side, or both sides. And I want you to close your eyes and tell me where I touch you. Left. Left and right. Right. Left, right. I'm going to do it on your face. Left. Left, right. Le right. I'm going to move on the left, the right, or both. And I want you to point to what's wiggling. Terrific. On item 11, he would score a zero. He did not extinguish on either visual or tactile stimuli. I did notice earlier in my exam that he did not describe the little girl in the cookie jar picture. But taking the whole exam into account, I would not give him a point for this item. This patient's total NIH stroke scale score would be 4.
and with the self. Okay. So right with the self. Thank you for the wonderful presentation at the Chow, and I'm sure the video presentation makes things much more easy for our participants to understand. There are a few announcements I would like to make. Uh, kindly go through your chat box. We have a submit our survey form there, and uh, please do not hesitate to fill up our survey form. And I would like to open the floor for questions. Are there any questions? Burning question for Dr. Chow? Hi, Chow Nasir. Um, Chow, I would like to ask uh, if a patient, uh, when you assess the lower limb uh, just now, if let's say a patient is unable to lift up the leg, not due to weakness, but due to pain, for example, patient might have had like um, a quite a severe uh, lumbar spondylosis or PID. Um, so how do you grade? Do you would grade that uh, as a weakness or do you take into account on that or how? Thank you. Mm, I, I think I will I will score what I see because uh if if if, if we if we uh score like oh I I think the patient cannot lift up the lower limb due to due to pain rather than weakness so this one become is like our expectation rather than what we see so this might be a bias. To the to the examination. So if according to the to the rule of NIHSS, you score, uh, we score what we see, not what we expect. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Chow, one from my side. Okay. Is there any correlation there with our NIHSS score with the the type of score? Is it the anterior, middle cerebral, and posterior circulation? Which one carries a higher specificity and sensitivity? I think I, I think the, the, the MCA one will, will carry higher no? uh, heavier. Huh? Uh, the NIHS score will will not uh, Is there uh, capture most of the the posterior circulation stroke. Uh, more to more to anterior and uh, middle circulation. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chuck. Hello, would you like to add on? To the Ashraf maybe. To add on, the Ashraf is the, the, the inventor of uh, the 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 Malaysian version of NHS, yeah. the BM version. No, like it's the whole team, Chow. Uh, yeah, great presentation, Chow, as usual. Um, maybe I, I start with a question first. How, a call uh, from your encounter. What what are the things that usually the junior will will miss uh, uh, doing when they're just starting doing NHS? Maybe you can share that one. Mm, miss most most of the time, I think uh, they they have they they put their expectation into yeah, the, into the examination. So this is what when they patient, want to yeah, see. When, uh, when patient unable to answer certain thing or do certain thing, they say, "Hey, uh, unlikely lah." I think patient uh, this, repeat this one must be. again and again. Yeah, mm -hmm. then repeat until yeah. until the the patient can do that. They say, "Ah, True. see." Uh, yeah okay yeah i i think yeah i totally agree with you for example I, even a yeah, fellow uh, i noticed that some of them uh, called basically don't don't really do it as what accordingly as you what you you show just now for example raising the, the hand you need to do it properly and sometimes in a very mild one you need to remove the visual control so you lift up the hand at 45 degree and you count to 10 right for the upper limb and you ask them to close your eye, you will see the drifting if you remove the visual uh, control. Okay. So uh, uh, that drifting will give you marks of one, right? Mm -hmm. So th that's one of the thing. And uh, it can be disabling if it's a dominant hand. Uh, and I just zero didn't mean that there's no stroke. Be careful on that. And totally agree with Chow just now. Postural circulation, uh, the representation for postural circulation is very, very low because of you have only ataxia and maybe the visual defect. Uh, so those things, uh, maybe a bit of Nas, uh, uh, Nina question just now. Uh, pain, 
uh, then uh, you need to know the limitation of NIHS. Actually, it was designed for, for, for research too. Um, in this case, then there will be a bit of clinical judgment. That, that will be my, my, what I will do. Basically, if there is pain, uh, hopefully you don't have cortical leg. If you have concurrent cortical leg, then you are unfortunate. Uh, but if you have uh, MCA syndrome, then you should have also upper limb involvement and facial involvement. Yeah, something like that. Pain. Um, Ashraf, apa tu cortical leg? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, you you can call look at uh, the motor and sensory homunculus. So uh, when we usually uh, say there's a weakness, and we call it as a, a, a cortical weakness. If it's isolated. It can mimic a, a lower motor neuron because of its in acute phase of a stroke. They uh, they will be hypotonic anyway. So uh, you see at the homunculus which area is involved. For example, if I just lesion at the leg, so then that's cortical leg. If I were to lesion or, or the stroke happen just at the hand, then it called as cortical hand. Cortical hand a bit easier because you you detect the omega first. Search for the omega. So there's few things to 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 study them. Omega okay. particle. <laughs> All right, sure. Uh, I just wanted to ask, yeah. Uh, since Ashraf, you have done an excellent job of translating the uh, NIHSS score, uh, the the reading part and everything into Malaysian version. So, benda tu memang is it widely used in a whole Malaysia or is it UKM or how, yeah? Uh, yeah, so basically uh, the, the intention why we translate that, uh, you know, the owner is Al Pacino. <laughs> so, and uh, during that time, Dr. Ramesh was here and he's, he already migrated to, to uh, Balarat, uh, Victoria. So the, the intention is basically to, to involve our paramedics in the future. Um, yeah, obviously then we need to uh, call you all as a team and together, uh, I think yeah, Chow uh, eloquently uh, presented just now. So it's already time to really ask our paramedics and even the, even the stroke nurse will be able to do this. That's, that's the, the, the aspiration and vision and mission. No? All right. Um, so, okay, I don't have much experience in uh, scoring the NIHSS NIHS score slurring sudah. <laughs> so, I just wanted to ask, uh, when you ask patient who cannot really, like, macam kan, the words are all in English kan, so, macam-macam, semua macam mana? Uh, do you have difficulty or how? Can you share on that? For me, for me, I'll ask the patient to count 1 to 20. So that's the, the easiest lah. Or you can use uh, uh, Dr. Ashraf punya uh, BM version. Oh, okay. Thank you. You, you mean the reading part, is it? The mama tip-top tu? Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Okay. So basically, if you notice, the, each one of the, the, the reading part, uh, that, uh, it comes from each part of the articulation. So, for example, mama is lips. Tip top, there's a bit of uh, called the lips and going to the soft palate. Uh, okay, something like that. So, as it goes to the back. So, uh, the, the caveats here is basically those who are illiterate, yang tak boleh baca. Okay, uh, so, uh, I agree. Uh, I would do the same like what Chow did. Uh, so, basically, um, I would ask them to count dalam bahasa, uh, satu, dua, tiga. Ataupun um, uh, the, the, the one of the easiest way is basically um, show them the usual things that uh, we use every day. For example, uh, you you bring up a pen, then letak depan mata lah. So cakap, uh, ask them to describe what is that. Tunjuk jam, what is that. So then you get a bit of a call, uh, a few other things. This is called both dysphasia and also uh, dysarthria assessment. But again, this such patient and IHS is of uh, uh, limitation lah by right, sebenarnya. All right, interesting. Anything else from other participants? Uh, 
Um, just for information, actually, Dr. Wan Ashraf Wan Zaidi is one of the uh, leading uh, stroke neurologists in uh, Malaysia, I would say. So if uh, I can see a lot of uh, EPs consultant also is also present. If you have any questions, uh, I think uh, it is a good time to ask uh, Dr. Wan <laughs> Ashraf. And Chow is also one of our trainer in the Malaysia Stroke Council. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's one of the steering committee. Chow, Chow, memang orang hebat tu. Uh, the, the next question, Chow, is basically, uh, do you think in the future paramedic can do? Yeah, good. I think that should be Mm. Uh, I think I think the, the, the future has a lot of possibilities. Lah. So as long as they, they go through proper training and all that, I think they should be able to do. But it will be part of their yeah, but it will be part of their like uh post basic something like that. Lah. Okay. okay. Advanced paramedic. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. So, uh, but uh, I'm not too sure because of when, when I did um, uh, training with my nurses, for example, they, uh, they actually they are more well-versed uh, using Bahasa, uh, sorry, Bahasa, but the, the English, English version. So I'm not too sure with the paramedic. So, uh, so uh, when, when we did it, so basically it's more of a called academic purpose. And subsequently we say that maybe uh, during that time also we exposed to the modified NHS. If you see the modified NHS, they put out the facial uh, call palsy out. They bring out the ataxia. So, uh, and uh, our intention is to use the Bahasa version in a modified uh, NHS because of, yeah, we, we know the limitation of this is not the usual thing that being trained to the uh, non-medical officers and call yeah, physicians uh, can. So, so that's why we want to modify it. But I think, yeah, it's something interesting that we can discuss in the future. I think it's always best to, to, to speak in the language that you are most comfortable with. Lah. If, if you force them to, to only speak in English, assess, assessment in English, then also a bit difficult. Uh, any other else question? Either to the child or to the one? Um, Ashraf, just wanted to ask uh, because uh, if I've not mistaken, NIH SS score of, uh, six and more predicts uh, large vessel occlusion, correct? Okay, so basically NIH uh, more than six, yeah, that will be from the highly effective registry uh, from all the uh, five, seven clinical trial. So Hermes, H-E-R-M-E-S. So um, this uh, called um, uh, this uh, uh, called a registry uh, then concluded that uh, NHS more than six uh, is associated with possibility of uh, presence of large vessel occlusion. Yeah, you're right. Um but yeah, so so uh, let's say much um uh, in in UKM uh, the the um how, how you do it is a patient come in with uh, I mean do you do CT angiogram for issue of the patient or when the NIH SS score is uh, six and above so I know you CT <laughs> is part of your this thing kan? is a part of your uh, okay. uh, protocol yes. Hello. Yes, Dr. Yeah, yes. So, uh, basically, didn't advise you to, to stop the CTA for, for just the purpose NIHS is less than six. Am I still in? Sorry. Um, sorry, Ashraf, was that? Can you listen to me? Yeah, you can hear So, basically, yeah, because I saw uh, Villa uh, called picture but it's hang just now I, I'm changing uh, call my uh, connection okay so okay. basically uh, CTA we will not stop uh, even though NHS is zero oh, okay. what we do is basically some modification to the CT perfusion so basically we might go off with no CT perfusion for certain patient uh, but uh, the CTA in uh, call in majority of the hospital I would advise to continue because I can tell you that even NHS 
two three they have large vessel occlusion oh oh and then uh, and then uh, what what can happen is basically after a few minutes then you call us back oh a uh, patient just now you you say that no need for rtpa no need for thrombectomy now and is 20 yeah so mm. so uh so you, uh this is nothing uh shocking much if you know we know everyone knows a uh, non stemi and stable angina compared to stemi right so the vessels may be partially occluded before okay. and uh, the only way is to look at the cta if you don't have a cta you always guess, guessing or maybe there's partial occlusion before something like that right mm-hmm. so then um, afterwards when it become 100% occlusion then you have a very bad nhs okay yeah so something like that uh, and we also have seen that the patient with cta clear and mm-hmm. ctp also being done so we know it's clear in a few seconds the patient had a cardiomyopathy af so mm. the patient throw another clot Ah, uh, so see. then the patient will then suffer another stroke. So then you will see a new clot, uh, yeah, in the vessels. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So I would advise CTA lah. C- CTA will be um together in in uh concurrently, not as a call when you think there's a large vessel occlusion because of, uh, sometimes yeah, you will you feel regretful because of uh those that you don't do is basically young, salvageable function, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, thank you for sharing. And for partial occlusion, that's the best time to RTPA to work. So need to discuss lah. If an is less than four, Chow did mention in HP just now is mild, but mm-hmm. sometimes they are non-disabling. But there is occlusion, so you are now in dilemma. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. so uh, but with 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 a with a proper CTA, less dilemma. You know, you can show to them there is a clot. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Shall we now? Yeah. Okay. Shall has anything to add? Tak ada sudah. Shall anything else to add? Uh, any any issues? Please call the one Ashraf for consultation. At least. Oh, it's not fair. <laughs> I want to ask questions some more for for Chow then. Uh, okay. uh, what what do you think? How how we can then uh educate maybe e EPs about NHS because of Nina mentioned just now, uh NHS eh? not not really much experience doing it is it Nina? Ah uh, yes because yeah. uh in a way maybe uh my deficit was uh I I came from a non thrombolytic center and now also in non thrombolytic center so the only aim is to get the patient into a thrombolytic center as fast as possible so using nihss ni memang i have very lack of evidence except during my master's rotation which was like many years ago so macam uh, it is a new thing for me as well so um thank you chao for the wonderful talk so i just wondering how do i improve because if i take too long for a patient who is a candidate for thrombolytic then i might miss the the transferring the the time of frame for me to transfer the patient to hpupm or to uh, hukm for example um so yeah how how do i do not know because i think um, um there are still hospitals out there uh, which are not a candidate for um apa tu uh, still cannot offer thrombolytic therapy so i don't know what do you think about that i i think the the, the key is uh, repetition and practice So it it was a new thing for me too a uh, few years back then whenever there's a there's a, a stroke patient then I'll just practice my NHSS uh, examination even even to those yang uh, datang 3 3 hari kemudian uh, those not not in acute stroke so whenever there's a uh, patient suspected of stroke uh, whether it's acute or 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 sub acute then you just do your nhss so for those sub acute one you has you have less stress uh. so you you can you can slowly <laughs> practice your nhss for for those acute one you want you want everything to be fast and if like especially those patient come in like 3 hours plus on set so you're like chasing for time so th- those kind of patient probably probably you want to send them for ct first then when they are, when when they done ct then you have uh, that window period of like 
five to ten minutes, baby, for waiting for the radio to to give you the the CD or to for for them to develop the images. And at that time, you can you can faster do an NHSS for the patient. Thank you, Chow, for your excellent advice. Yeah, I have to work harder. <laughs> Uh, actually, totally agree with Chow. I, 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 I do the same actually. So we, we when the, the ED team activated, um, and I, I welcome the uh, call our uh, ED team to do uh, NHS too. But uh, don't, don't delay the CT scan where you can do en route to the CT scan. And sometimes when we're waiting for the CT scan door to open, that's the time where, where we, we do. Sometimes we manage to finish it. Sometimes we just do maybe three quarter oh, okay. of it. Uh, so there's no delay. So basically, while, while we are pushing the patient, and then uh, we, we start to do all the NIHS. So it's very fluid. I see. Thank you for the tips. I will try to improvise myself after this. <laughs> okay, now, shall we? Uh, gamba Gamba. Okay, yeah, sure. Thank you, Dr. Chow, for the very pleasant uh, presentation and also our advisor, main advisor, Dr. Wan Ashraf, for the highly remarkable advice and also key point for certain area that is uh, still new for us. And uh, yeah, please, everyone, with your kind cooperation, can you uh, switch on your video? Thank you for the uh, participants. So follow up keep, keep. in our Facebook, there will be a video uh, shortly will be uploaded by Nina soon. Yeah. And um, you can also, also follow up our progress through the Facebook ID Neuroemergency Special Interest Group. Yeah. Um, but it's just that this time we have to divide into two because uh, Alhamdulillah today our participants uh, hit 40. So banyak pula orang. So kena ada dua page, kena dua kali uh, senyuma. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um. I think still got few people. Uh, haven't uh, switched on their it's video on the yet. Topic. Yeah. Would really Thank appreciate me. if you can do so. You are part of our memories, and uh, yeah, participation as well. Okay. So I think I just uh, snap one now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Smile, everyone. Okay. One, two, three. Thank you. Okay, I'll go on to the next page. All right. Um, just hold on, yeah. Okay. Um, one more time. All right. Uh, smile, everyone. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, okay, thank you, Nina, for giving me a chance to be a moderator this time. No problem. So we'll see you back next month. Uh, we will update uh through our flyer. Uh, and um, next month will be um. Um, critical with uh, neuro critical care specialist uh, talk from uh, Associate Prof. Wan Nazaruddin from HUSM. So yeah. he'll be sharing about how to manage ICP uh, in a neuro critical care setting. So I hope that uh, we can have uh, uh, as many participants as possible. And um, yeah, back to you, Avila. Okay, that's a wonderful day morning. So hope have a great day.